Hello from the Lake Placid Ski Jumping Centre, an iconic location since the 1980 Olympic Games. In recent years, it's been refurbished and upgraded to bring it up to its current world-class standard. And what a magnificent view it is from the top of the hill. 35 athletes standing by and ready to jump, but uh, that's going to happen uh, a few minutes later than expected because there's been a lot of snow in Lake Placid this morning, and that's meant that a lot of work has had to be done on the slopes. And they've done some trial jumps. That's where we're at at the moment. And now they're just re-preparing that uh, slope, the hill, and the landing area to make sure that it is safe and fair for everyone. Well, the first event is the individual Gundersen in the Nordic combined. The women will go first, then it's the men once we get uh, the action going. And each athlete completes one jump on the normal hill, and then later today they're going to be competing in a cross-country race. But right now, that is the situation. Uh, the temperature minus one. I'm pleased to say that it has stopped snowing, so things are beginning to settle weather-wise. So the athletes have had a run out um, amongst, uh, you know, uh, amongst each other. They've been sort of looking at that hill and thinking, yeah, we, we really want to go. But the organizers quite rightly uh, want to make sure that it is completely safe. And so we're a few minutes further away than we would expect at this point from uh, the start. It's been delayed round about um, 20 minutes. So most of the athletes are now um, in the warm, undercover, and uh, staying loose and warm for when the action begins. We're on the 90-meter hill. Uh, so the 90-meter landing mark is, is what we're focused on. For every meter more or less than the uh, K point, as it's known, an athlete has two points added uh, or deducted if they're behind that distance. So all eyes on that left slope, because that is, uh, that is where we are going to have the action. You can see the markers uh, marking the distance on the side of the uh, hill. But uh, as I say, we have a delay, so we will be back at 14.20, 2.20 local time. And that is in about 15 minutes when we will get this first event in the Nordic combined underway. Join us for that then. A warm welcome from the Lake Placid Ski Jumping Centre where the first event of the Nordic Combined Competition is about to get underway. It's the individual Gundersen, and so the results here will decide the starting order for tonight's cross-country race. And this is how we line up. The women will go first. We've got a total of 25 athletes competing, 19 in the men's, 6 in the women's. Uh, three countries have sent athletes into the women's competition. And we've seen the order that they will jump. The men representing six different countries, 19 uh, men in total. Got Henry Johnston, the junior national champion from the uh, USA there. Alexander Schumberetz representing uh, Ukraine. And Melsinski, Nicholas Melsinski of the USA there, second in the Junior Worlds last year. So there's some real quality. The fans obviously are excited about uh, the quite large USA team here. But it's the Japanese that have looked strongest so far in the, uh, in the trial runs. Those are our judges from Finland, Slovakia, USA, Poland and Switzerland and they have literally the best view in the house they can look right down onto the slope and the skiers the jumpers come right past them and so we've had a delayed start to uh, the event uh, simply because of the amount of snow the um, forerunners have been out uh, and to help prepare the track but uh, really from uh, Early this morning, the snow has fallen quite heavily, 
and the volunteers have been out with their spades and their brushes and brooms trying to uh, prepare things and get things ready. But we are ready to go now I, with the forerunners. Um, so the forerunners, basically, they head down that slope to just make sure that everything is settled, that the snow has settled, that the tracks are right, and um, to test the, uh, the landing area as well. Some Japanese flags flying. And if the predictions are correct, then uh, those Japanese fans will have plenty to celebrate by the end of the day. So the coaches and the organizing officials just keeping an eye on things. Um, there are flurries of snow, um, but often the big problem with ski jumping is, is strong winds. Well, I'm pleased to say that we don't have any issues with uh, wind. The, uh, the wind ribbons are literally just hanging vertical from their poles, so there's nothing to worry about at the moment uh, from that point of view. So here we go with our first jumper, Ayani Miyazaki of Japan. 20-year-old from Nagano gets us underway here at the Lake Placid Fizu Winter Games. And it's a nice jump. The judges, remember, looking for technique as well as distance. And that was 50. 7.5 she's been given looked a little bit further than that to me so she was just inside the uh, inside the distance there and gets 97.9 points so remember the, the, the K point as we call it is uh, where you, it's that one of those red lines. If you hit that, you get your 60 points. And then every meter beyond that, you get extra points. So Joanna Killer Poland. All right, Joanna's got a really nice looking at Nice takeoff. Good push up from the legs. And the telemark landing. They have to land in a certain way, in a certain style. Of known as the telemark landing you see the push off and that's why strength and power in the legs is so important you can put your hand right on me and that's got a 78 78 meter distance see how the points work out but that's put Joanna Kill of Poland in second place so Sana Azagami now of Japan, our fourth jumper. Just Happy. waiting to be given permission to go. Ayana Miyazaki is the woman to beat at the moment. Nice style, nice control, a little bit short on the landing. Landing. Let's have another look at it. Skis quite wide apart, brings them back together. Now, telemark landing, and what the judges are looking for is that one foot lands just ahead of the other one. 80.2 points. And that puts Sana Azagami in third place. Haruka Kasai, one of two twins here. Her sister Yuna will go straight after her. Now, Haruka managed 91.5 meters in the test jump earlier on today. being told maybe the the wind is changing direction 
Singapore is picking up, but she's been told to come off the, uh, out of the gate. <coughs> Just slightly too much breeze. So I'm halfway down the uh, the landing hill, and uh, there is no breeze at all here. But clearly, it's much stronger up at the uh, top of the slope. Seems to be settling. And so Haruka Kasai of Japan gets into position. She jumped the furthest in the test run earlier on. She matches a distance of 91.5, that will put her in the lead. You can see the uh, flag there has settled, and that's the go. Really nice looking, stable in run position, and a big jump. Nice style, solid. Oh, that's going to be really close. So it'd be interesting to see how the judges uh, score that. I think that might make the difference. She got 86 metres. So short of the K point. But it was good enough. 114 points. That puts her top of the pile. So at the moment, Haruka Kasai is first. The compatriot Ayana Miyazaki sits second, and Joanna Kill of Poland is in third. Oh, yeah. So our final Even jumper in the women's competition is Yuna Kasai, 18 years old. So the green light is on. They have 10 seconds to launch themselves once the green light goes on. That's what she's done. Right ski slightly off to one side, but she brought it back. Solid landing. And distance was 80, 80 meters. So 80 meters is uh, well under what she jumped in the Training runs earlier on today, but what do the judges make of her style? She's got herself 100.5 points. That is a good score, and that puts her in second place. So that uh, concludes the uh, women's round of the individual Gunderson that's confirmation of the results wow Japan first second and third I did tell you they were a strong team Poland in fourth uh, Sana Azagami of Japan in fifth and Tess Arnone uh, in sixth place so what that means is that uh, we will go into the cross-country race tonight with Haruka Kasai out in front and uh, it's a pursuit start so she will begin and Yuna Kasai her, her sister will start 54 seconds uh, behind so the women are done and we move on to the men's individual Gunderson now they have a 10 kilometer cross-country race to compete for tonight but where they start will depend on the results of this jump 19 men in total representing six countries and it's really uh, it's it's a tough one to call this um, there's a, a real mix of of talent and experience in the field japanese obviously uh, looking pretty solid um, and they were certainly looking very strong in uh, in the training sessions earlier on today those are the uh, technical officials who are keeping an eye on on the breeze on the snow the, the quality of the snow and the landing place just to make sure that everything is safe and a four jumper is going to go down first maybe one or two of them will just to test everything and 
the reason they need to do that is because as the snow falls, obviously the, the softer snow falls on the harder snow and it starts to make things uh, quite difficult. And the important thing, or the main thing that they're looking out for, the, uh, the officials, is that the snow isn't too wet. Well, temperatures here are sub-zero. Um, not very low, um, minus one, minus two. Um, so uh, that is keeping the snow in, in good condition. These games have been supported by the local people, by the local community of Lake Placid, and uh, they have come out despite the snow um, and difficult conditions to get here, actually. The uh, snow was falling so quickly that it was uh, it, they were struggling to keep the roads clear, but um, they've done a good job with the infrastructure and uh, plenty of people have come down to, uh, to support these athletes. For five, uh, sorry, four American uh, ski jumpers in this uh, competition. Obviously, that's who the home fans have come to uh, keep an eye out for. And they have a local boy to support as well in uh, Evan Nichols, who trains here on a regular basis. But first to go. Will be Gunnar Gilbertson. Kazuho Kodate with bib number one gets the men's competition underway. Now he jumped 82 meters in training. It was a clean landing. He managed to reach 82 meters. So he's matched. Uh, this morning's training session. Total of 90.5 points. Going second, Motoki Yamanaka of Japan. Now, we didn't see him do a uh, trial run earlier on, so we've. I uh, don't think he made that make it up the uh, slope in time. Chose to just go cold once the competition began. Very nice looking in run. Explosive power off the step. It's that red line. He's happy with it. He punches the air. Oh, the ski's getting a little bit uh, separated too far apart. It's like putting the brakes on. He brings it back in for the landing, but he'll be marked down because of that. It's 95.1 points. Third to go from Poland, Pavel Schindler. He hit 70 meters earlier on today in training. Wait, he's got the yellow light. It's just like uh, standard traffic lights. <laughs> he's got the. He's in gear, just waiting for the green light, which has now come. And off he goes. And the aim is to keep your centre of gravity around the ankle area as you go down that slope, and then to maintain it through your flight. That was short landing, though, 77 metres. Some good points all around the 16 mark, and that uh, gives him a total of 83.1. Puts him into third. 
novel. That puts him into third place behind the two Japanese competitors. And going back to the combined portion of this, he's going to start 48 seconds behind Matoshi Yamanaka of Japan, and Matoshi's teammate Kazuho Kodate. Henry Johnston of the USA, you can hear the shouts from the crowd that have come to support him. Junior national champion, two times junior world championship team member. And his family have this sport through in their blood, both his dad and his grandfather were Nordic combined athletes It'll be interesting to see what distance he's given for that it's a little short to me yeah 68 meters and the points are down from the judges so uh, not the best of jumps from the American confirmation of the point 66.6 he's going to struggle to recover from that when it comes to the cross country Handicap will be uh, just too big for him. Number five, number five, our third Japanese athlete, to go, Takuya Nakazawa. Looks like a steady breeze. Such a strong team, so much competition between themselves. Looks like a safe landing. He doesn't look very happy with that. In fact, it was an 82 meter jump. Judges like the style, though. He's been given 90.7 points, and that puts him into second place. So at the moment, it is Japan in first, second, and third, led by Yamanaka. Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic goes next. Studies IT at the Skoda Auto University. He has the green light, pumps the legs for takeoff. The right one widens a little bit too much, and he knows it's not as good as he, as he would like it to have been. So 88 meters was the distance and got some good points from the judges, bringing up to 106.3. So although he seemed disappointed on landing, it's not done badly at all. In fact, he's got top of the pile. So out of the six that have gone, Mate Fadron's leads. Magazan Ampoduli of Kazakhstan. Just about holds that right ski together. That was uh, tough to stay up from. Very wide skis. In the air, the aim is to accelerate so that you travel further. And that's done by extending the legs, turning the toes up, as you can see. But it's important to keep the skis about hip width. 81.5 puts him in sixth. Adam Skupian from Poland, the 20 year old, is ready to go. but and he's been given the green light. Off he goes. Powerful 
powerful launch off the slope. Clean landing. And, well, distance-wise, it was short. It was 69 metres, and the judges, not sure they're liking his style. Yeah, lots of 15, 15.5s from the judges, uh, giving him 63.9, which puts him in eighth place. I don't know place. what that is. What are the judges looking for? Well, they're looking for no movement of the skis through the air when they're flying. They're looking at the body shape and also the style of the landing. It's got to be a telemark landing with one ski forward uh, and one about a foot length further back with the knees perfectly bent, arms out like wings. That's what the judges are looking for. Good looking in run position. Alexander Shumbaretz of Ukraine. He managed 69 in training. He's gone one better to 70 meters on this run. The judges happy with the style. Lots of 15, 15.5s, uh, but a total of 62.4 points. That's the confirmation, and that puts him in ninth place overall. So up next, Andrei right, Szeszczowicz right, of Poland. One of two Polish athletes competing in this Nordic combined competition. Oh. He, started, he was very bent over, he pushed up through on the launch, clean landing, and it was 85 metres. But the judges like his style, the points are coming in, and they're looking good. 97.7, that's a good score, that puts him into second place behind Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic. Scored a whopping 106.3 points. That's the, uh, that's the uh, scores that they're looking to catch. And Ali Askar of Kazakhstan goes next. landing one of the youngest competitors in fact the youngest competitor in this competition and you have to think you know at that age to come and not just do a sport like this that takes so much uh, sort of psychological pressure so much confidence to launch yourself into into the void like that um, as well as dealing with with that you're at an Olympic venue. You look up. Obviously, at the age of 17, he's not going to remember the 1980 Olympics. But there's no escaping uh, those uh, those Olympic Games when you come to Lake Placid. You really feel you're in a true legendary sporting arena. Well, Ali Askar sits 11th after his points of 59.4, and now we're watching Timothy Ziegler of the USA. Jump 59, and he's gone to 57 on this jump. So uh, really short jump. Disappointing for him, and uh, not the best style either. Yeah, marked quite down. 35.2 puts him in 12th place. 
On to Sakutaro Kobayashi of Japan. He jumped the furthest in training earlier, so there are a lot of expectations on him right now. He's the oldest, most experienced competitor here. 22 years old. Can he pull it out of the bag again? Nice launch. Nice style. Solid. And a good landing. And he knows he's done well. 100 meters distance. The furthest jumper by far. And it's going to be difficult to catch that. Looks like he's put himself in a fantastic position for the cross-country race tonight. Sakutaro Kobayashi goes top of the pile. And look at the points, 138.6. It's 32 points ahead of his nearest competitor. That's extraordinary. Home fans have come to check out this guy, Evan Nichols of the USA from Lake Placid. Nice fluid launch. Distance. 88.5. The judges, though, like the style. So the judging points will bring him up, will help that shorter distance. And we'll see his total points, 107.3. That's excellent for Evan Nichols. Studies at the Communi Community College of Vernon. And a well-known name on the uh, American ski jumping uh, or Nordic combined circuit on the national championships twice already. Waiting for the okay from his coach. This is Aiden Rip. He's in the end run. You can see he's really on his short distance. Wasn't uh, the most powerful of launches off the table. All right, Aiden is an absolute ripper on the cross country. But look how he keeps those skis up. Arms have to be beside the body as you fly through the air to steer to too far apart. It's like right, so putting the brakes on. The style wasn't appreciated. 44.1 points, and that puts him down in the 14th place. Top three, Japan, USA, and the Czech Republic. But right now, it's time for Vitali. Rebenyuk of Ukraine. Is coming next, 21 years of age. Big support for the Ukrainian athletes here. And he's happy with that. Almost hit the uh, crucial 90 meter mark. It was 88.5. Good style through the air, good style on the launch. Keeping his legs straight through the air as well. That's what they want to see. And that's given him 103.2. That puts him up into fourth place. And uh, to help you understand the, the significance of you know every meter and every point, every 15 points at the end will count as a minute handicap at the start of the cross-country race. Vitaly, sorry, Rasmus Atava lands on his jump. Finnish team looking strong once again after a while in the doldrums. Good distance, 92 metres has been confirmed. A good style. So he will finish uh, quite well up the leaderboard, I think. And we get his uh, points confirmed. Yeah, 104.5. That puts the Finn into fourth place. Nice job. The 
Dmitro Mazuchuk, a penultimate jumper today. He managed 86.5 in training. He needs to do much better than that to keep up with his uh, compatriot, who's currently sitting in fifth. A nice flight through the air. Distance of 89.5, so he has done a lot better than he did in uh, training. And the judges like his style too. Skis a little bit far apart, mind. But he holds it together, and that gives him 102 points. A really good performance from the uh, Ukrainian, putting him into sixth place. So our last jumper is Nicholas Malasinski of the USA, 19-year-old. Silver medalist in the Junior Worlds last year. Waiting to get his one jump in. It's uh, brutal rules, isn't it? You mess up your jump and it messes up the whole competition for you. Nice control through the air. But was it a long enough jump? Probably not, 82 meters. Mostly 16, 16.5 16 are coming through from the judges. But look, looks in control, doesn't he? And that's what the judges are looking for. Good positioning, good flight, good control. And that gives him a total of 108, sorry, 100.8. And that puts uh, Nicholas Malasinski of the USA into seventh place. So the first stage of the ski jumping in the uh, individual Gunderson is complete. These guys now face a 10 kilometer cross country race. That's why these uh, athletes are amongst the, uh, the fittest all rounders. Um, at these winter games because of the explosive power needed. And there we go, Sakataro Kobayashi of Japan will have a huge advantage of two minutes and five seconds in the cross country. At second, Evan Nichols of the USA. Third, Mate Fadron, he put in a great jump for the Czech Republic. Further down, it's Japan, 9, 10 and 11. Timothy Ziegler bringing up the rear. Six minutes and 54 seconds, it will be his uh, handicap start in the cross country. Plenty more action to come at this venue uh, with the ski jumping and plenty more ski jumping in the Nordic combined as well over the coming 10 days as the crowd begins to filter back to uh, the car park and to head home. So it's been a good day for the Japanese leading both the uh, women's and the men's and they will go into both cross country races with the leading athlete. So a terrific start to the Nordic combined. It's a 10 kilometer cross country race for the men tonight and a five kilometer for the women. Make sure you tune in for that.
live from Mount Van Hovenberg for the climax to the Nordic combined women's and men's individual Gundersen. We're about nine miles from Lake Placid where the Fizu Winter Games cauldron burns on Main Street and the athletes are almost ready to go. They've transferred the short distance from the ski jumping complex to the cross country track where they'll race to decide the medals. Japan looking very strong for all three medals. After the earlier ski jumping round, the athletes now face this fast and gruelling racetrack. The women go first then on the five kilometre track and later on uh, it'll be the men's turn and they'll complete a 10 kilometre race. Well, we've had lots of snow today, but it stopped a few hours ago. Temperatures actually relatively warm uh, for Lake Placid at this time of year. Snow temperature zero degrees. So things are looking good. And what we've got in detail is uh, a considerable amount of fresh snow down on old snow that is crunchier and icier. So they'll have spent quite some time working out what preparation they want for their skis. Two and a half kilometers twice is what the women will uh, have to complete. And we'll have a look at the starting line up in a moment, but it's a one, two, three for Japan. Looking at the USA's Tess Arnone. We will start well back. Well, these are the women to beat. Sitting first after a great jump earlier today is Japan's Haruka Kazai, who scored 114 points. In second is her twin sister Yuna. Her 105 points jump means that she'll start tonight. 54 seconds back. Japanese 1-2-3 is Ayane Miyazaki, 16.1 points off the lead. And that means she starts tonight a 1 minute and 4 seconds behind. So we have a pursuit start. And it's going to be interesting to see amongst these six women how the strategies work out, what sort of tactics they've got in mind. I mean, you'd expect the uh, two twin sisters, Haruka Kasai and Yuna Kasai, to um, head off and, and race their own race, 54 seconds between them. But you've got to wonder, can Joanna Kill of Poland uh, catch Ayana Miyazaki of Japan? Tessa Noni has it all to do, and although she starts sixth with a five-minute, 11-second handicap, the uh, judges uh, have decided to use the uh, wave start, so um, it basically means she'll start three minutes uh, behind the leading skier. So the scene is set. It's an interesting and picturesque course through the forests of Mount Van Hovenberg. And the first skier is off. Haruka Kasai representing Japan. Sprints off the start line with a 54 second advantage, and she's got to make the most of it. Uphill to start with, it finishes with a, a pretty fast downhill this course. And you can see the uh, tracks being treated by the um, by the uh, cats, and it has been tested by the track testers as well. We were watching them going round, just making sure everything was uh, safe and fair on the track. Ten seconds, and the next one will be released. Senior-old Yuna Kasai starts her cross-country lap. 
Japanese athlete holding silver medal position. Ayane Miyazaki just a few seconds behind. It's going to be an interesting battle, certainly for second and third. It'll also be fascinating to see if those uh, two athletes, the two Japanese athletes, can chase down the leading one. Joanna Kill of Poland is off. She'll be leaving about a minute after Miyazaki's start. Joanna Kill with the number four bib on the right hand side there as we look at the start line. It's a fantastic venue, this. One of the legacy venues of the 1980 Olympic Games. Joanna Kill begins her pursuit of a medal. Can she catch third place Miyazaki to make it bronze? It'll be about 45 seconds before we see the American athlete set off. Here's our leader. Making a lonely road through the race, through this track. And I suspect if all goes well for her, barring disaster, that is a shot that we're going to see throughout the race. Haruka Kasai out on her own. But Tess Onone didn't have the best of jumps earlier on today. Gets her race underway finally. And for her, it's very much a, a race for pride. Show what she can do. 19 years old, the youngest competitor of the six women. The pioneer of the sport, she attended the first women's world championship and a veteran of the World Cup. Yani Miyazaki making her way to the top of uh, one of the climbs. And they'll put in a total climb of 87 meters on this track. Leader out in front, untroubled. It's been about uh, four hours since they completed the ski jump round. Time to get some food on board, get fed and watered, have a rest, have some physio, maybe some massage. Most importantly, to make sure the technicians have prepared their skis perfectly for the conditions. So this is a, a very fast downhill part of the course. Fast enough to get into a into a squat. And if you've ever used cross-country skis, you know how difficult it is to keep them under control at speed downhill. So very little time difference between uh, the uh, the two leading women. In fact, it's almost exactly as they started. Miyazaki has reached the first intermediate stage a minute 28 behind so she's lost time on the leader lost a good 24 seconds but of course she's still doing that uphill climb that uh, Kasai is now long past and she has the advantage of going downhill as well so we'll we'll get a better idea 
as they complete the first lap of two as to where everybody actually stands. Joanna Kill of Poland. Two minutes, two seconds behind, so no change there. It does mean that the pole is closing in on the third place Japanese. So here comes our leader into back into the stadium. One lap almost completed already. Into the stadium. Needing little adjustments to the speeds to stay in control. It's all about balancing speed with control. Seen plenty of Japanese support in the uh, in this Nordic combined. They were out at the ski jump, and now we can hear them, hear the Japanese fans supporting their athletes at this venue, Van Hovenberg. This is Ayana Miyazaki coming in to the grandstand now towards the uh, stadium finish. Second lap, this is where it starts getting tough. This is where you start feeling the muscles, where you start screaming for breath. But Kazai, or Haruka Kazai, just needs to keep up the pace. She, she's got plenty of breathing space. But she's got to keep the pressure on if she doesn't want to see her twin sister catch her. The time difference coming into the stadium between Haruka and Yuna is pretty much how they started the race, around 58 seconds. It's been a solid, controlled, Confident lap so far for Haruka Kasai. Untroubled. It's just about now playing it safe, making sure she doesn't pick up an injury. And Yuna Kasai trying desperately to close the gap on her sister, but um, it hasn't changed since the uh, start of the race. So. It's looking like it's going to be a 1-2 for Haruka and Yuna. Looking uh, towards the back, Tessa Noni, the 19-year-old American, now nine minutes behind. 
That includes, obviously, her time handicap. But positions at the moment, Haruka Kasai, Yuna Kasai, Miyazaki of Japan, so it remains Japan 1, 2, 3. Then comes Kill of Poland and Arnone of the USA. As we focus on our leading athlete, she makes her way through some of this stunning forest. Really unique to the Adirondack. It's a huge, huge national park the Adirondack Mountains. Someone was telling me that uh, Yosemite and Yellowstone Park could both fit inside the Adirondack Park. It is a stunning, wild place. Well, we're watching two of the brightest uh, hopes in Nordic combined for Japan. Haruka and Yuna Kasai, twin sisters that at the moment are taking this competition by storm. 50 seconds now, the difference between them. So uh, on this second lap, Yuna has dropped Eight seconds have taken eight seconds off the leader. Straight after this, we will have the men's individual Gunderson cross-country, 10 kilometers, so they'll complete four laps. Here's Miyazaki. She's lost time from the start. Uh, she's dropping further and further back, about 30 seconds behind the leader now, or increased her, the difference, I should say, by 30 seconds. Haruka Kasai comes into the stadium and begins to get closer and closer, begins the run in to the finish line. Her jumping earlier today was really fantastic. It was confident and I mean, she landed so much further than her compatriots and the other women. But here we are, the first gold medal in the Nordic combined goes to Haruka Kasai of Japan with an absolutely dominant performance, both in the ski jumping and in the cross country. She's hardly lost any time on her pursuers. The other Kasai comes into the stadium now. You can see she's beginning to hurt. She knows. It's just a few seconds to the finish. She's got to stay in control. She doesn't want to fall. She does have plenty of breathing space, plenty of time between herself and her chasing compatriot Miyazaki. And Yuna Kasai sprints to the finish line to take silver in the individual Gunderson. A good jump from her and a good cross-country finish. And that is gold and silver to the Kasai twin sisters, the 18-year-old bright stars of Japanese Nordic combined. Now, we're going to have a third-place finish for Japan as well. It certainly looks that way. Ayane Miyazaki should be entering the stadium very shortly. Here she comes. Uh, 
Well, she started a minute and four seconds further back, so she hasn't been able to close the gap at all on second, or second and first place. But you can see just how much she's pushed, pushed it through these five kilometres. But look at that, how close is the pole, Joanna Kill. And she's really putting the pressure on now. Can Miyazaki keep that distance? It looks like she's going to be good as she sprints to the finish line. The last few metres are going to be hers. And it's bronze for Japan and Ayane Miyazaki. But what a brave finish from Joanna Kill. Another half lap, and I think the pole could have taken a podium finish. <laughs> So relief at last for these three Japanese athletes who have really stormed this competition. Well done to them, the Kasai sisters and Miyazaki. First, second and third for Japan. What a great performance. <laughs> <laughs> so a big hug. <laughs> and they're arranging themselves conveniently into a podium position <laughs> with Haruka in the middle, our gold medalist, Yuna, her sister take silver and the 20 year old from Nagano Ayani Miyazaki takes the bronze medal well done to them Joanna Kill what a great performance from the pole starting uh, two minutes further back and almost closing the gap on that third place and let's not forget Tess Arnone our final athlete to come in to cross the line the American from Steamboat Springs in USA, representing Colorado Mountain College where she studies nursing. She's just finishing her sort of outside the stadium lap, the sort of forest trails, and is now approaching the stadium. a little bit lost, a bit confused by um, where she should be going, but she's picked up, I think, that the correct straight, and she's now heading to the finish line. And a big congratulations to the youngest competitor in the field, 19-year-old Tess Arnone, who takes fifth place. And we wish her the very best, not only her skiing career, but also in her pursuit of excellence in the field of nursing. Bravo to all six competitors doing a great job at five competitors in tonight's event. We did have one racer who was unable to make it to the skiing portion, but Team Japan, the big story, sweeping the podium with one, two, three finish. Congratulations. Just looking at the um, pursuit time, that's the actual time skiing, um, so it doesn't include the handicap. Uh, Anone actually was only a minute 40 uh, further back, uh, took a minute 40 longer to finish than the winner. And was about uh, 30 seconds um, behind Miyazaki, so uh, she had a good cross-country run did Tess Arnone. <laughs> Confirmation of the results and the medals. Haruka and Yuna first and second. Ayane in third. Joanna Kill of Poland in fourth. And Tess Arnone in sixth. And Sana Azagami didn't start. Um, we're not sure why or if there was a problem or an injury. Um, but uh, commiserations to her. And well done to these guys.
Now, a little bit later this evening, there'll be a presentation to the winner, who is, of course, Haruka Kasai. And this is how she did it, starting with an advantage of 54 seconds after a terrific ski jumping round earlier on today. A good, solid start and a consistent performance. She managed to maintain that advantage almost to the second as she came to the finish line. Our first gold medalist in the Nordic combined. And Miyazaki can't believe it. Doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. And they will be presented with their medals a little bit later on. Bit of a language barrier <laughs> between the local journalists and our winners. What's it like to compete against your sisters? Sisters, I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry, wait, yeah. Yuna, I've got. Okay, so Yuna, you have done better this season than you. So do you guys go back and forth? You win, you win, you win. Yeah. It would be great to catch up with them actually and hear what sort of strategy they have, whether they help each other or whether in, in this sort of situation or whether they actually race against each other. <laughs> okay, and for Japan to go one, two, three? What, talk about that? Very happy. Okay. Also, Maseda University. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 So <laughs> very. So what is your hometown? Hokkaido is a Sapporo. 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 Where are you from? Nagano. Nagano Prefecture. Nagano. Okay. Nagano City. Nagano. Nagano City. Yeah, no. Nagano Prefecture is Nagano Ken. <laughs> you could eat. <laughs> Ozawa No Ozawa. N O Z O W A. Yeah. No Ozawa is the name of your city, hometown. Okay, we're not going to create that here. You're from Sapporo in Hokkaido. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you jump? Where do you practice jumping in Sapporo? Oh, Nagano. Okay. Okay. And uh, what? Did you have uh, expectations? Did you think you could win here? Win at the World University Games? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that word. Yeah, I don't either. Um, <laughs> confident? Confident? Confident to win? To do well? Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, did you go to the Tokyo Olympics in 2021? Did Tokyo uh, Summer Olympics? Did you, did you see? Did watch? You, did you watch? watch? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. And so, of the twins? Twins. Okay. Who's the number one jumper? No, it's every my Nichi, daily. Who's the better jumper, you yeah. or you? Yeah. You're the better jumper. Okay. You're the better skier. Um, so... Onaji. Onaji. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Same. But today you were the better jumper. Good jumper. Yeah. So were you afraid she would catch you skiing? Catch uh, to you. You. You start, and then Yuna start. Did you think she would?
time for the men's individual Gunderson. It's a 10 kilometer cross country race in the Nordic combined to decide the medals after today's earlier ski jumping round. So the athletes are preparing to do battle out on the snow. Great conditions here. The um, snowfall that we've had for most of the day is now cleared up. It's a very pleasant evening. Not too much breeze. It's fresh snow and uh, the track has been tested by the women that have just completed their round. 19 men competing and they will complete four two and a half kilometer laps, a total of 10K for this uh, deciding uh, round of the individual Gunderson. Eight different countries represented, 19 men competing, and there's one man who is outstanding, and that is Sakutaro Kobayashi of Japan, who had the most extraordinary afternoon on the ski jumping. Scored well with the judges, flew like a bird, and he is going to go into this with over a, a two-minute advantage. USA's Evan Nichols is right behind. 107.3 points. And then comes Mate Fadrons of the Czech Republic, just a point behind, which equates to four seconds at the start of this race. So it's all to race for in the men's. They're some minutes off uh, starting yet, doing their uh, preparations and their, their warm-ups, but uh, Kobayashi is gonna be very difficult to catch. He has a two minute, five second advantage, but I can tell you that the top nine are all in with a really good chance. This, um, about 50 seconds separating them. So that's our starting lineup. Evan Nichols of the USA. Probably too much of a of an ask really to expect him to close two minutes on uh, the leader but the battle for silver and bronze is going to be really close and you know do they look over their shoulders or do they just try and catch the person in front what sort of race what sort of strategies are we going to see of, uh, we've got two ukrainians in fifth and sixth including uh, dimitro mazuchuk who goes sixth As Sakataro Kobayashi starts this race with a two minute, five second advantage. And barring disaster, that's a fall or an injury or breaking a ski, I think the gold medal is already in his pocket. So, first climb for the leader. They'll be uh, putting in a total climb of 87 metres around this course. Height difference of 46 metres. And there is a huge descent into the stadium at the end of the lap. So they're able to get some good speed up. 
after the difficulty of getting up the slope. And this gives you a, a real idea of how big the gap is, how big that handicap is for the rest of the field. But also how great a, a jump that uh, Kobayashi put in to get 138.6 points. 31.3 points greater than his nearest challenger. But a lot of these guys, obviously, they specialise. They're better at ski jumping or they're better at cross country. And Kobayashi is trying to find sort of the, the, his path, really. He's trying to find uh, where he's strongest at the moment. Our second competitor from the USA, Evan Nichols, is away. Straight behind him, the Czech Republic's Matej Fadrons. Rasmus Atava, Vitali Rebnuk of Ukraine. Andres Szczykowicz of Poland. bouncing around on their skis, just trying to keep warm, keeping their muscles active. It's a long wait when there's that sort of time difference. Um, the uh, rear of the, uh, of the pack, by the way, from 14 down, uh, will all leave on 4 minutes 10. The judges deciding to use the wave start so that we're not waiting too long for the rear of the pack to get started. There is calmness personified, a leader. No pressure, just has to race his race, really. Second and third, this is where the big battle is with Rasmus Atava in fourth, just on their shoulders as they come up this first slope. intermediate stage in 3 minutes 18.4 seconds. So already they seem to have split into two groups. So there's the battle for silver and bronze and you've got six men chasing that. And there's a lot of track for them to do that in. As our leader already comes into the stadium. And only now have the chasers reached that uh, intermediate point. They're two minutes and nine seconds back. So. Uh, the, the time differences have remained stable from the start. So the chasing pack have just reached the first intermediate stage, but our leader, Kobayashi, completes his first lap and heads out again for lap number two. 
Hearing that Matoki Yamanaka didn't start the race. So one of the four Japanese athletes pulled out. But here we are. The battle that is ensuing behind the leader. And you can see that six, seven, and eight have now, and five have now court and close that gap so this is really close and if we follow them we'll we see if we can work out what strategy they're using Here they come into the stadium to complete the first lap and Evan Nichols of the USA still out in front. Mate Fadrons, who led the ski jumping at one point and then finished third, uh, fourth rather. So we've got number seven, Nicholas Malasinski of the USA coming forward. So are we going to see some team tactics here between the American athletes? Rasmus Atava lets him go, sticks to fourth place. Now in that pack, oh, we'll have a look in a moment. Let's, let's focus on our leader now. So he has remained steady. And you could see, you know, that the chasing, the chasing pack, putting lots of effort in, trying to get the speed up, trying to push their limits, but they're just not closing the time difference between themselves and the leader. So the two Americans, side by side, leading this group. Mate Fadrons of the Czech Republic, falling back slightly. Atava of Finland has moved up. So, our, our leader in this pack, Nicholas. Uh, Milsinski of the USA from Colorado. Kobayashi, the oldest, the most experienced of the men in this uh, competition, 22 years old. Nicholas Malsinski still out in front twice junior national champion top 15 at the junior world ski championships so 20 years old but uh, has done plenty of competing plenty of experience under his belt say out in front is actually half finish which is where he spent a lot of his time when he was younger and that is what inspired him to Nordic sports and especially the Nordic combined
Oh, there. We can see the difference now between the leader and the chasing pack. camera shot made it look like they were closing in on him fast but the uh, clock is not uh, is not telling us that So the gap to the leader remains just over two minutes. But the gap between this pack has got closer and closer. Now, number five, Vitaly Rebenyuk of Ukraine, beginning to fall back. Are we going to see a breakaway from these four? Matej Fadrons also dropping back. This is where the mental attitude kicks in because uh, they can't start getting flustered. They can't start pushing too far. They've got to pace themselves. They've got to decide how they're going to uh, race against the uh, the other three in the pack. Can't afford to lose focus and, and get it wrong on a bend. Gap's been closed now. Change of lead. The Americans swapping the hard work, taking it in turns. And now Rasmus Atava has come out in front. Ahead of Malasinski. Comes Evan Nichols. They'll be wary of him, Dimitro uh, Mazachuk of Ukraine, known to be a good sprinter. Mazinski will be confident in the sprint finale as well. And a very comfortable Kobayashi out in front. Japanese coach running alongside him, giving him his encouragement. And uh, more than encouragement, I suspect he was giving some information and data, letting him know that he's maintaining that advantage that he had from the start. Yeah, the time difference between him and second place has hardly changed. Still reach, still uh, leading the pack. Mm. 
So 16 minutes at this mark and 6.4 for Kobayashi. That's a good time. Six athletes chasing two medals, a silver and a bronze. Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic dropped back now. Trying to follow each other's tracks and staying in each other's slipstream. Getting a rhythm going. Uphill they come. Rasmus Otava of Finland out in front, leading the pack. Now, he's known to be a really good cross-country skier. He's got huge amounts of stamina. And he's proved that many times. But he has uh, suffered some illness recently. So there's a question mark as to how fit he actually is. I guess we're about to find out. At the moment, he's looking good. Still out in front, but it's Otava leading this pack with Malasinski chasing and Nichols. But here comes the leader back into the stadium for the third time. And looking at the time differences, the gap between him and his, the chasing pack is just not coming down. He's being super consistent. In their descent towards the stadium. A target still out in front. Nichols has now gone out in front. Tarbert has dropped back a little bit. See how hard work it is to get up this steep slope. So as we watch the leader, I'm wondering how long it is before there's a breakaway in this pack, and it looks like we've got it. With a lap to go, Evan Nichols has decided to push. Teammate Malasinski is right behind him. Nichols must be feeling good, must be feeling confident if that is an attempt at breaking away with still a lap to go. Tava keeping contact with second and third. Team USA, Reba Nuke of Ukraine Back still in the mix. Still very little to... Right there, right behind the Americans in fourth position. 
to differentiate this lot. Uh, the Czech Republic's Fadrons bringing up the rear of that pack. Calm as always. Our leader knows he has this race in the bag. But the chasers have managed to shave a few seconds off at Kobayashi's advantage. Nichols had tried to break away, but uh, it seems that they've now concertina back together again, so it's obviously thought better of it. tough final few kilometers for the chasing pack Kobayashi is clear just a kilometer left for the Japanese leader and then the gold medal will be his what a great uh, performance he's put in today Now a change of lead again. Nicholas Malasinski has gone ahead, but he hasn't just gone ahead. He's he's now beginning to uh, build some distance between himself and the others. Evan Nichols right behind him. Is he going to try and chase? And Atava of Finland still very much in the mix. Then comes uh, Mazachuk of Ukraine. Rebenuk of his teammate, also of Ukraine. And then... The man who started third, Matej Fadrons of the Czech Republic. He seems to be suffering now. Breathing heavily. This is hard work uphill, especially when you see the rest of the pack moving away. That's when the psychology comes in. Can you keep it up? Can you keep pushing? So Kobayashi coming in to enter the stadium and complete the final lap. 24 and a half minutes or so of racing. Well, he put in a terrific jump on the ski slope on the uh, ski jumping earlier today. And now he's about to complete a great performance. So here comes Sakutaro Kobayashi of Japan. He was great on the ski jumping and he's managed to hold the advantage through the cross-country skiing as well. It's gold for Japan, their second gold in the Nordic combined after the women's success earlier in the day. 22-year-old has taken gold. And now he looks back to see just how far behind the chasing pack are. And if he stays and watches, he's going to see a thrilling finish because it is really close for second and third. Well done anyway to Kobayashi of Japan. He started with a two minute, five second advantage and hardly lost a second of that in his four laps of this course. So who's going to enter the stadium out in front? And it looks like it's going to be Malasinski of the USA. The athlete from Steamboat Springs, Colorado Mountain College. 
competing in his first FISU World Games comes up to the finish line and having fought with the rest of the pack for every meter and every bit of space he does it he takes silver for the USA and Malasinski's half finish well Mate Fadrons is also in the mix but Rasmus Atava of Finland takes fourth sorry <laughs> takes third Rasmus Atava takes third and the other American who's fought so hard Evan Nichols comes in behind him so it's gold for Japan silver for the USA and bronze for Rasmus Atava of Finland So it's victory for Japan, USA taking silver, Finland taking bronze, and USA's Evan Nichols taking fourth place. The two Ukrainian athletes have come in in fifth and sixth. Takuya Nakazawa of Japan now crosses in ninth place. So two Japanese athletes in the top ten. And the winner, his teammate, goes over to congratulate him. Aiden Ritt, another American, crosses the line in tenth. Immediately a chance for them to catch up with their coaches to already analyze uh, how things worked out and where things went right and where things went wrong. Steep learning curve for these young athletes. They've got a long term future in mind, and every competition is a learning experience for them. Kazuho Kodate of Japan coming in to take 11th place. Pavel Schindler of Poland. Got Henry Johnston of the USA coming in there and finishing as well. Sakutaro Kobayashi has been on the circuit for some time now. He's the most experienced athlete in this group, and he's shown that experience in his calmness and his control, both on the ski jump and on the track here. An excellent run from Rasmus Atava of Finland to take the bronze medal. Is on the left. Just caught a shot of uh, Timothy Ziegler of the USA coming in. <laughs> this is Adam Skupian of Poland. Started in 15th. So we're now seeing the uh, 
the races that began towards the the back of uh, of the field they all started with a wave start of four minutes and ten seconds this is uh, Magsan Ankajuli of Kazakhstan Aliaska of Kazakhstan coming into the finish, the youngest competitor in uh, Nordic combined. So a good finish for him, for the 17-year-old who finishes in 17th. Aliaska of Kazakhstan, well done to him. You know he's going to be back. He's got plenty of time. <laughs> Confirmation of the results and the medals. It's gold to Japan and Sakutaro Kobayashi. Nicholas Milsinski in the end of the USA takes second with Rasmus Satava in third. Tonight, the medals will be presented by Kenny Chow, Executive Committee Member of FISU, on behalf of the Lake Placid 2023 Organizing Committee. Gifts presented by Christopher Brockmeyer, Protocol and FISU Relations. A bit of a delay with the medal ceremony here at the Mount Van Hovenberg circuit. So it's a great chance to look back at a superlative performance by the winner of the uh, women's Haruka Kasai.
Well, if Haruka Kasai looked dominant in the women's competition, I'll well, take a look at just how strong S uh, Sakutaro Kobayashi was in the men's. Nice launch, nice style, solid. Second place, representing Japan, Yuna Kazai. Well, what a day for Japan, taking all three medals. Miyazaki Ayani with the bronze, Yuna Kazai with silver. And we talk about a great day for Japan. It's a fantastic day as well for the Kazai family. Japan, your champion, Haruka Kazai. Gold and silver for the two twin sisters from Japan. Lake Placid 2023 Fisu World University Games winners. applause for the Lake Placid 2023 FISU World University Games winners. This concludes the medal ceremony for the women's individual Gunderson five kilometer cross country ski race. Congratulations to our three medalists from Japan. Kept us entertained today with some great jumps at the ski jumping complex. And then their consistent, solid performance 
in the cross country. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the medal ceremony for the women's individual Gunderson five kilometer cross country event. Confirmation of the medals, Haruka Kasai and her sister Yuna taking gold and silver. And that third medal for Japan is bronze for... will be presented by Kenny Chow, Executive Committee Member, FISU. Gifts presented by Christopher Brockmeyer on behalf of the Lake Placid 2023 Organizing Committee. Third place and bronze medalist representing Finland, Rasmus Atava. Presenting the United States of America, Nicholas Malasinski. Yeah! Gunderson Normal Hill 10 kilometer cross country champion representing Japan, Sakatoro Kobayashi. from Sakutaro Kobayashi of Japan, grabbing Japan's fourth medal of the Nordic combined so Ladies far in the individual Gunderson. by uh, Malsinski of uh, the USA, who finished the day in second place, having started in seventh. And those medals, by the way, at the center of them, made of recycled glass designed to look like the ice and snow that surrounds us here. So congratulations to Kobayashi of Japan, who takes the gold. Also to Malasinski, who came back from seventh to take silver. And Rasmus Ataba of Finland took the bronze medal.